Blade Smiths, congratulations. You've made it to the final round of this competition. Now we're sending you back to your home for just to recreate an iconic weapon from history. The Kybeel Fleesa. Both functional and ornate, the Fleesa is the traditional sword of the cable Berbers of North Africa. Ranging in size from daggers to sabers over three feet in length, Fleesas are single-edged, the straight back, and cutting edge that tapers. The long, needle-like tip and unusual weight and balance make it ideal for tearing through mail armor commonly worn throughout the 19th century. The Fleesa was deeply rooted in the Berber faith and is complete with complex geometric designs and animal head pommel. Good luck. We'll see you in five days. My name is Colin Sage. I'm 27 years old from Louisville, Kentucky, and I've been smithing for about five years now. I'm intimidated by Will Willis's hair, and it changes. It's like a chameleon. His locks, they're going to distract me. Maybe he has them down. Maybe it's pulled back. I don't know. It's, it's going to be tough. Ready to forge and fire! Oh, sh got that a little too hot. So I just left the steel in a little too long. It got so hot, it started fracturing. I've got to be careful, never taking my eyes off that baby. So trying to get to the two inches wide at the base of the blade and at the belly is not fun. It's getting extremely thin. It's got me a little worried, you know, a extremely thin blade is going to be prone to warp in the quench. I'm digging a freaking trench. I've got to get this thing heat treated as fast as I can. This is a quench trench. There is very little precision in what's happening right now. This has to work. If it doesn't work, I'm, I'm just done. I'm out. I'm finished. I'm going to attempt a vertical quench, because that should keep the blade from warping. <sighs> Razzle dazzle, baby. I'm fully expecting this thing to be all warped and crazy, and it's straight. The verdict right now is, <sighs> is I'm really tired. That's the verdict. My name is Daniel Casey, and I'm a full-time traditional knife and gunsmith. I'm going to do well in this competition because I stick to traditional methods, and it really shows through my work. Steel being super high carbon steel like it is, it's not moving a whole lot, even at a pretty high heat. So I've got my work cut out for me. No doubt about it. There's still a little bit of polishing that I would like to do before I can call the blade done. So the main thing that I do have some concern about is the actual hardening of the blade. I've definitely been putting it off as long as possible because it could either warp on me, it could get a crack in the blade. Listening for that ping, trying to make sure that it stayed straight. It's definitely not as straight as I was hoping. And there's no way to fix that. So we're going to roll with it. We're moving on. So I decided I'm going to do, I think, an eagle's head with my handle material instead of part of the blade material. It's going to cut a little bit more weight off of the sword, which will be a good thing. So it may work out in my favor. The handle section it does seem very small for the size of the sword, but we're trying to stick close to the original. It's definitely a knife handle on a sword, but uh, I put a nice palm swell in there. I think that's going to help a lot with the grip on the sword. I'm confident that the handle will work out well. To see what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, well, will deliver slashes and thrusts on this ballistic dummy. Colin, you're up first. You ready? Have fun. Let's do this. To help me today, I'm bringing back one of Marqueda Kali's chief instructors. Please welcome US Staff Sergeant Chris Manns. All right, Colin, your Kabil Fleesa is very sharp. On the initial thrust, it penetrated deep and easily through this whole ballistics dummy. The handle is comfortable. It's easy to slash in and thrust out. Overall, it will kill. Good job. Thank you, sir. All right, Daniel, your turn. You ready? Yes, sir.
right, Daniel, your weapon is wicked sharp. On the initial thrust, it penetrated deep. And on the way out, with your belly being forward, it lacerates out easily. Now, because you have such a very skinny handle right here, and there's no pummel with a counterweight, all the weight is in front. The balance just makes the blade rotate with a small handle like this. But in terms of damage, it will kill. Thank you. Good job. All right, bladesmiths, next up is the strength test. Ben? Bladesmiths, to test the strength and durability of your Kabil Fleecer, I'll be smashing them into these terracotta parts edge first. Remember, this test is all about what the parts do to your blades and not what the blades do to the parts. Carlin, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. All right. Colin, your blade held up beautifully. The uh, edge, it's like it never saw it there, terracotta. Did a great job. Well done. Thank you, sir. Daniel, you're up. You ready? I'm ready. Well, Daniel, your edge held up pretty well. I rub my fingers across, I can feel just a little bit of uh, a wire edge, but nothing major. But my, my big concern, this handle. It's so small that I had a tough time indexing it, but it's beautifully carved, edge held up beautifully. Very well done. Thank you, sir. All right, gentlemen, you survived our kill test and our strength test, now the sharpness test. Test the sharpness of that blade and to see if it still has an edge, I'll be cutting through these fish. A clean, sharp blade should pass right through those fish. The dull blade is going to knock those fish out of the way or give us a jagged, torn cut. Colin, you ready? Yes, sir. OK. And I'm just thinking, please just slice through this thing. All right, Colin, right off, it's definitely a sharp blade. It cut very nicely. Your handle is a bit on the fat side, but uh, it's definitely a cutter. Good job. Thank you, sir. Danny, are you ready? Yes. OK, great. I feel that Colin and I are still neck and neck. I think that I've got a good edge on it. All right, Daniel, this blade is wicked sharp. And those cuts, you can see, they just blew right through the fish. My problem is, this is so small, I had to fight to keep it in my hand. These flisa often have a very small handle. But what saves that is having that pummel keeping your hand from coming off the back of that blade. It's an amazing cutter. It's just very difficult to hold on to. Daniel Collin, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion, and that champion is. Collin, congratulations. You are a new Forged and Fire champion. Daniel, your sword didn't make the cut. Please surrender your blade. I am disappointed, of course, that I didn't win, but I'm absolutely proud of the work I did here. If anything, I think that this fuels my fire to work harder and do better. Colin, congratulations. You are our new Forged and Fire champion, and that's the title that comes with a check for 10 grand. Good job, buddy. As far as your animal head pommel, I'm going to go ahead and say it's probably an underdog. <laughs> <laughs> well, Colin, please present your weapon to the judges. Will Willis out here telling me I'm a champion? Can you believe it? Mm! Champ, I can't believe it. Forge and Fire champion out here. 